Hello Techies. To access Gmail through API, we need to configure the Gmail in Google Cloud Platform in simple five steps. One, create a project at Google API Console. Second one, after creating a project, we need to enable the Gmail API. Third step, auth consent screen. Fourth step, providing the credentials for the API. And finally, we will test the Gmail API after creating the Gmail API. All right. Gmail API is one of the most popular email services so far, and you will very probably want to use it as a mailbox for your web or mobile applications or desktop applications. As a first step, we want to create a project for the Google API console. If you see on my screen, we're going to browser and then I'm going to give the URL as console.cloud.google.com. If you are accessing Google Cloud Platform for the first time, then it will ask to choose an account. If you have Gmail or Google account, then use that account to log in into the Google Cloud Platform. I'm going to use my email ID that is learning technologies 2020 at the rate of gmail.com. Let's click on that and provide the password for the respective email ID and then click on next. Now, if you have not created any project for the Google Cloud API, in that case, first we need to create a project. So it will comes to create a project. On the right hand side, you will see, I have already created a demo project so that I can go ahead and you can use it. But for the first time, if you don't have any project in that case, click on new project and then give the project name over there. I'm going to give the project name as Gmail API demo. And then I'm going to give the organization. I don't have any organization right now so that I will give it as no organization. And then I'm going to click on create. Now to access our Gmail from any web application or desktop application, we should start with Google Developers Console itself. Then we have created our project over here with the name of Gmail API demo, right? You can see the project number and after that you can see the project ID. As of now, I have created the project. As a second step, I need to enable the Gmail API for the particular project. Now, to enable the API, I'm going to the navigate menu and then I'm going for the API and services. And then you can see the option over here, enabled API and services. Click on that. And there on the topmost, you can see enable API and services. From here, you can go ahead and you can enable the API services by clicking on enable API, which will redirect to API library. Okay. Now, if you see our agenda is that I need to enable Gmail API right so we will go for gmail api under google workspace and there you can find gmail api let's click on that and there you can see i'm having gmail api you can go ahead and you can enable this let's click on that to enable the gmail api now our gmail api has enabled successfully if you if you want to once again if you want to disable the api in that case you can go ahead and you can disable it all right, or else you have another way to enable the Gmail API. You will go to the library directly and then from there you can go ahead and you can enable the Gmail API. That is the second way that you can go ahead and you can enable the API for your project. Now, as a third step, we need OAuth consent screen. All right, so there you can see I'm having OAuth consent screen. First of all, we learn what is this OAuth. OAuth or Open Authorization is a widely adapted authorization framework that allows us to consent to an application interacting with other on behalf of you without having to reveal your password. It does this by providing access token to the third party services without exposing user credentials. The consent screen tells users who is requesting access to their data and what kind of data they're asking to access. 
was a developer verification to protect you and user users consist by consistent screen may be needed verified by the Google. Now, by using this watch screen that we are going to give the access to the users by clicking on that, I'm going to choose the configuration and registration of the app, including the target users over here. What kind of user type that I want to give it? There are two types over here. One is internal, another one is external. Internal is for the organizations, external for the, you know, available for any test user to uh, you know, test user with a Google account. So that right now I'm not working for the organization so that I'm going to use external and then I'm going to click on create. Now I'm going to give the app information. So where the consent screen helps us to access. Now I'm going to use this for the power automate desktop or for the postman that I will use it so that I will give the app name as power automate desktop and then the user support emails for which user that you want to contact with the questions about the consent so i will give my own username that is for the learning technologies 2020 at the rate of gmail.com and then if you see app logo i didn't have any logos over here and coming to the app domain i'm not going to provide any app domains over here now coming to the developer contact info in my organization, I'm the developer, I'm the tester, so that I'm going to give my email ID that is learning technologies 2020 at the rate of gmail.com. And then I'm going to click on save and continue. Now, as a second step of the OAuth consent screen, we need to choose the scopes over here. What is the scope over here? Scope is a mechanism in the OAuth 2.0 to limit an application access to the user's account. Now I have given my email IDs, right? I want to give the application access to the particular user account. In that case, I will define the scope over here. An application can request one or more scopes. This information is then presented to the user in the consent screen and the access token issued to the applica application will be limited to the scopes granted. Over here, it is nothing but the type of access that we are going to give for the particular user. Now, if you see, when you click on the add or remove user scopes, there you will find lot of scopes for the, uh, to enable the APIs. There you can see there's a lot of APIs are there. Along with that, you have the scope over here and after that user facing description. Now, in our case, I'm going to use Gmail, right? As an API, so I will go for Gmail API. There you can see I'm having different scopes over here. That is Gmail API, that is HTTPS slash mail.google.com. And after that, you have modify, compose, add-ons. These are the different scopes that we have. Read only, metadata, and insert. So whatever the based on your scope that you want to define for the particular user, you will select that, the particular scopes for the respective API, and then you will add them to the particular user, right? As of now, I'm not going to give any scopes over there. All right, let's save and continue. Now, to test this uh, particular API, I need to give the test users, right? I'm going to click on add users, and then I'm going to give, while publishing the status to testing, who are the test users can be done. Over here, I'm going to provide my email ID because of, as I said, I'm the, developer as well as the tester. And then I'm going to click on add. Once we have been added the user, there you can see the user information under the filters over here, right? Previously, we didn't have this user information. Right now, after adding that, you will get this one. All right, let's save and continue. Now, we'll get the summary about the word consent screen where user type is external, app name is Power Automate Desktop, supporting email ID, whatever the details we have provided, all the information will be there at the summary page while you are going to creating it, right? Now let's go back to the dashboard. Now, as a fourth step, I need to give the credentials for the API. There you can see I'm having the tab called credentials. Let's click on that. Now, if you see in the credentials, I'm having API keys, was 2.0 client IDs, service accounts. Three types of 
credentials we can create by using this credentials tab now from where we can go ahead and we can create these credentials by clicking on create credentials now if you click on that we have api key what client id service accounts are available over there as a api key if you choose the api key it will be only useful for the google sheets only so now our agenda i am going to use gmail api in that case i am going to use what client id which will provide over the client id and the client security key now i'm going to click on what client id and then we are going to give create what client id what type of id that we need to create for which application type i am going to create it i will say i'm going to use desktop application and the desktop application name i'm going to give it as pad okay and then i'm going to click on create now if you observe over here what client created successfully it will provide client id and the secret can always be accessed from the credentials in the api services right you can see my your client id you can see our client secret code you can click on okay now the same thing will be available under the was 2.0 client ids over here now we have created a project we have enabled the gmail api we have created what consent screen and after that finally we have given the credentials for the api now for whatever the things we need to do for the gmail api we have done all the required steps but i need to test it this gmail api is working as expected or not all right how can i go ahead and do that to test this gmail api we'll go for the library and then we'll go back to gmail api and there you can see try this app is available so by using this try this app we can test our gmail api is working fine or not let's click on that a new tab will be open for the uh, testing purpose that is developers.google.com slash gmail slash api slash references right now if you see over here i'm having a lot of rest resources are available such as users drafts histories labels and messages now whenever you are going to use gmail api you want to retrieve the emails right in that case you are having the list of emails or you want to read the particular email id or you want to send a mail what not so you can get by using list send insert you will use them now to test it i'm going to use list of the messages that i will use it and there on the right hand side you can see try this method try this method this is the method which we are going to use for the list of the messages so this will call on live data and see the results experiment with authorization field settings over here i need to provide my user id user id means my email id i'm going to give my email id such as learning technologies 2020 at the rate of gmail.com and then include spam trash or not if it is yes then you are going to give it as true if it is false then if you don't require spam or trash then in that case if you are using false if there is any label ids you can give them label ids the num maximum number of results if you want if you want 10 as a maximum results in that case you will mention the number of results over here as 10 if you have any page tokens and the query strings you will mention in the respective parameters over here now if you come to the credentials over here i'm going to use google auth 2.0 let me show you the scopes over here what are the scopes that we have we have seen over there for the gmail api the same scopes are available under the google was 2.0 if you want to use api key in that case you are going to use api key but in our case we are going to use google was 2.0 client credentials that we are going to use it right i'm going to disable this and then i'm going to click on execute now we have provided what consent screen right so that it is asking to choose the account for the google api explorer i'm going to use the same account which i have given for the what consent screen for the testing prospect or the developer's perspective let's click on the account which i have given now if you see over here Google API Explorer wants to access your Google account such as read view your messages read and read compose and send emails i'm going to allow this 
and then if you see it is trying to execute the given uh, you know scope and then you got it 200 right let me expand this by clicking on the expand option over here i have executed the gmail api by giving the parameters such as user id and then i have given the credentials and then i have clicked on execute now if you see it has given output in the application slash json format which is 200 these are all the mails which i have in my gmail account right now i'm going to give the limit over here as 10 and then i'm going to once again i'm going to give the day and then once again i'm going to execute that now if you see over here previously i got n number of messages but over here i got it only 10 messages over here with the id and the thread id and after that i got the n number of messages based on our maximum result if you're not going to mentioning this we'll get all the messages over here now if you observe over here the output the input over here it's given in the curl http and the javascript so now if you're going to use in the javascript how you have to execute the you uh, know gmail api by using this javascript you can give the pseudo code over here right in the same way if you're going to use http in a such a way if you're going to use postman like that you have to give the get and after that you have to give the url request url and after that in the body you have to custom messages or the body you have to provide authorization and the bearer and the, you have to use your access token along with that what is the type of data it is going to accept in the format of application slash json format in the same way in the curl language also where you have to provide your url and after that headers you have to provide it and the header you need to what kind of data it is going to be accepting what type of data it is going to be accepting all right i hope you understand how to create a google api by using console application then we have seen how to enable the gmail api or after that we have seen how to set up the oauth consent screen and also we have provided the credentials for the api and finally we have tested our application which we have created by using developers.google.com 